is you just got to remember one thing, you know, you're a human being and you have the right to enjoy life the rest of your life or be able to have a place and be able to be comfortable and, and live your life day by day without having somebody use you as a doormat. My name is Michael Hill and I live at Prosperity Village, which is part of Habitat for Humanity. My signs, the reason for my signs and the signs that I've, I've created was pretty much to get my story out there to the public, to the area that I live around. I sent a message to the CEO, Hell, for his response. I called his phone, left a message on his phone, and I also emailed him, letting him know from A to B to C, everything that took place. One, I was got behind on my rent a little bit. They served me a three day. I went to go take care of it, come to find out. The manager lied on the three day. So I, I made a meeting with Nicoletti. He decided not to care, dropped the ball. So I told the CEO, so I'm contacting you now to let you know that I've tried to resolve this before I went to you. Okay, that you as the CEO surely must care about what's going on in the company that you're a CEO over. And didn't receive nothing, no email, no phone call, no message, nothing whatsoever. And I told everybody as I went, you know, I told him that he's like the last person on the totem pole, that if I don't hear from you, then my next step, the next time that you hear from me or hear my name, it's going to be in a different way. And it's either going to be in legal matters or it's going to be in the media because if that's how I have to do it, that's how I have to do it. Somebody's got to open their eyes and pay attention to what's going on there. Well, the goal would be to um, be living in a place where I'm able to continue my life expand I have left because I have congested heart failure. And so my time is limited, you know? I need to be where I'm able to relax and not be upset and worry about everything that's going on because uh, I'm in my last stage of congestive heart failure. So with that being said, you know, how much more time I have, they say probably less than a year. So add to that a bunch of stress is the worst thing I could do for my heart. And unfortunately, because of how things are being ran there, it's becoming more stressful living there than anything. But having to deal with um, like bed bugs, roaches, you know, things like that. We got an epidemic, okay? And uh, the law says it has to be treated a certain way. And if it's not, then you're not getting rid of them. Know that because of my health, one, my problem is, is, is my legs swell up. Okay, and the last thing I want is for a bug to be biting on me. It got to a point where when it seems like they're very active, I wrap my lower part of my legs with saran wrap, and then I put my shoes on. But because my situation is, is my legs, it's not good for my circulation to do it like that either, because my blood does not circulate through my body as it's supposed to be. And so my legs from my ankle halfway up almost to my knee is already purple. So for me having to deal with things like this, I just sometimes, I mean, I'm a prisoner in my own room, to be honest. There's no other way to say it, because if I go out, I take the chance and the risk of getting more harm to me. Okay, and uh, bed bugs, once again, aren't the easiest things to get rid of, you know? They're the ones that are responsible because they're the management company, they're the owners. And, um, that's how, you know, that's their job is to, is to make a place, a safe place to live. And when they just, seems like they just don't care, it's very easy for one thing to lead to a bigger thing and then to a bigger thing, you know? And like I said, I'm not worried about myself. My time's up. I'm worried and it bothers me. I lose sleep over other people who can't speak up 
who shouldn't be going through it and having to deal with it. That's why I'm here right now. It's not about me. It's about those who can't do it for themselves. Those who don't have the voice is why I'm here. Some people may look at it like, how can you do that? Because they can't speak up. They won't say nothing because they're afraid of retaliation. They're afraid of losing their place that they live in. And when you're an elderly person and an elderly person that has a health problem, it's not that easy when you're out there trying to find a new spot. It's not, okay? Because you're dealing with everything that's leading up to it. So it just makes it even, excuse me, worse and worse and worse. It's like, where are you going to turn to? I can handle that. I'll deal with it. So they don't have to deal with it. If what I'm doing right now opens somebody's eyes so somebody will take the step to deal with this problem at this place, then my job's done. It's my passion is, is advocating for people, helping people fight for their rights. I've done it for since I was an adult. And um, apparently I can't get it out of my system. So normally I have the strength to do a lot of this on my own. But once again, I refer back to my health. The reason for contacting CRLA is because first off, they're known for helping people. I mean, I, I came to them because I knew that the possibly chance of helping me was gonna be a good thing. And it turned out to be just that. I have them as my attorney to help me through this, okay? I mean, this is the last thing I thought I'd be doing, you know, going against a perfect place that I thought was perfect. To, my last place that I have to deal with in life until I pass, I thought was this spot, because it was heaven sent. They came to see me in the hospital when I was in a hospital bed. Okay, so that meant everything to me is, uh, you know, Somebody's offering me a spot. As soon as I come out, I have a spot. Like when I first, uh, when I first got there, I was so happy about having a place, and so happy about Habitat giving me the opportunity to have a place instead of being on the street. Okay. Easter, I made Easter dinner, paid for it, prepared it, me and a couple of my friends, and fed the whole entire Prosperity Village. Okay, there must have been seventy tenants there and I did that to show my appreciation on my pocket and passed it plated it up and made sure everybody got a meal and then fed the homeless that's giving back you got to give back if we all just gave nothing about anybody else what kind of a place would we live in you know you make a change make a difference you know if we all practice that just a little bit our, our place would be a lot better place